This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. It's a, it's a two o'clock block, maybe a little after that, uh, here on a given Wednesday. And we have Kartiki uh, Mishra. He joins us from Varanasi, India, which is in the northern part of India. Welcome to the show, Kartiki. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to see you. We, we, uh, we, we sent photos, but now I get to see you in the flesh, and that's much better. And I have many questions I would like to ask you. For, first, okay. I want to I know about uh, Varanasi. I understand from looking at the map that Varanasi is near the northern border uh, of yes. India. It's a couple of hundred kil kilometers from uh, Nepal and Bhutan. Yeah. Uh, how far is it, in fact? Um, Varanasi is much far from Nepal. I believe 800 kilometers. Ah, okay. And from Bhutan, it's much more. Ah, okay. Are, are you near Delhi? 700 kilometers from Delhi. Oh, so you you really and you're not. It's not that big a city, relatively speaking. I mean, for example, yes. Honolulu is less than a million. You're 1.2 million, is what I understand. Is that right? Um, it's on the record, but officially, unofficially, it's nearly 4 million. Unofficially. Ah, that's the uh, the. Uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, outskirts, no? Yes, including the outskirts. And it's famous uh, in the sense that it's a very old city, maybe the oldest city in, in India, maybe in that whole part of the world. It's got some very old buildings, yes. and it's right on the Ganges. Do you, do you bathe in the Ganges, Kartiki? No, I'm far from the carts and the banks of Ganges. Okay. In fact, I'm living near Sarnath, which is a Buddhist uh, city or a Buddhist town in Varanasi. Ah, okay. Are, are you Buddhist? Are you Muslim? What I notice your, uh, your. I'm a Hindu. I'm a Hindu. Hindu. Okay, okay. So uh, you must be concerned about what's going on in uh, in uh, Myanmar. Yes. Uh, what I personally believe is that any issue related to the security of the state of a nation like India, and the issue of the secure internal security of Myanmar should be dealt with by them, not by India. Yeah. Because there are security threats, our international agencies and our own national security advisors have said that uh, Myanmar can be a problem, the Rohingyas. Yeah, it's really tragic what's happening there. And, and you wonder uh, if, if anybody is going to go in and, uh, and, and stop, the, stop the rape and slaughter. Um, are there any sounds within the Indian government to, to say that India might go and do something? It's Indian right government... Border. Yes, Indian government might provide all the facilities to the refugees until and unless the things calm down in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very tragic. So, uh, what what kind of a what kind of a city is uh, 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 now? I've lost the name. Uh, Varanasi. Varanasi. Uh, I mean, what what is what is your major uh, industry, for example? You have a lot of tourists. I understood that a tremendous number of tourists came to see Varanasi. Uh, what's yes. going on there? Um, basically, Varanasi is a, the spiritual capital of India. It is called the spiritual capital of India. And it is having all the major, major religions, all the major beliefs in that city. So all the, and one Hindu uh, temple, which you can call Kashi Vishwanath, is in Varanasi. Many devotees, lakhs of devotees visit uh, Kashi Vishwanath. Mm -hmm. And you talk about industries. Varanasi is famous about uh, silk saris, special silk saris from Varanasi. Uh -huh. And carpet industry is near them. Ah, interesting. So uh, you're a student. What school are you a student? You're in a college student there. What school are you yes. in? Yes. Um, the School of Management Sciences, Varanasi. I study in Varanasi only. Uh huh. Okay. And what what, uh, so what what year are you start? What year is what what year are you in in college? Uh, second year management. Ah, is that a, is that a graduate degree or undergraduate degree? Undergraduate degree. Okay. So uh, what is your uh, what is your plan? What is your, what is your occupational plan? What do you want to do after you graduate? I have aimed for doing a CAT, which is a um, national exam, which takes place throughout India. And through that CAT, we get admissions in the colleges, best colleges of India, IIMs, mm -hmm. through them. And I am to, planning to do CAT after completing my graduation. To do, could you and spell that for me? I didn't understand that. Tax, did you say? CAT, C-A-T. What is, what is C-A-T? 
um, it's a comprehensive uh, an admission test or what is said it is basically like entrance exams mm -hmm. compiled entrance exams for mm -hmm. all universities in india mm -hmm. okay and what do you, will you do more school after that i believe i will do the mba ah. and i will try for civil services ah so in the same school or will you go to another school for the mba another school i believe and other cities are much better than Varanasi in this aspect. Uh -huh. but I did notice that Varanasi had a, a tremendous number of schools. Uh, yes. I, I suppose that's all over India, but uh, you had some famous schools, as a matter of fact, uh, in Varanasi. Uh, BHU is one of them. In fact, um, the Asia's largest um, residential university is uh, BHU, Banaras Hindu University. Mm -hmm. So uh, how, how is life in your program? What, uh, what kinds of courses are you taking right now? Basically, I'm uh, graduating in management. So all the uh, in facts and relating to that subject is somewhat interesting for me. And I like to do CA if I could. And all the aspects of corporate India are rising right now. I can't explain them. <laughs> Very bright future for India. Yeah, so is, is India healthy now? Is the economy good? Everybody like... Yes. Uh, like, uh, Indian economy is going at 7% per year. Oh, that's terrific. Uh, and so uh, what, about, what about Premier Modi? Uh, how, how do people like him? People like him three years past the government. He took the oath in 2014. But there is some dissatisfaction with the Prime Minister due to the decisions he took. Uh, demonetization on 8th November, two years back. And uh, GST, which is a very issue all the political parties, especially opposition, is trying to say that Modi government was a failure in implementing GST. Uh, uh, what's GST? Uh, goods and services tax. It's basically a kind of a tax in which you compile all the various taxes. There were many taxes, service tax, uh, uh, toll tax. Many thousand, hundred types of tax were compiled in one tax. That is called GST. Uh -huh. uh, basically compiling the whole of the Indian economy, converting them into one market. Uh -huh. Well, I remember it was maybe a year ago when uh, he decided he wanted to... Uh require uh, everyone to, uh, he wanted to get off a cash economy. He wanted yes. to get on, onto a, an economy that he, could, that he could have records on and uh, require transactions to be reported. And since India is really a cash economy, that was a problem for a lot of people. Are we talking about the same thing? Yes, very the same thing. And 85% of the currency wiped out from the economy from the 8th November. The very same night he took the decision, 85% of the cash currency was out of the Indian economy. Well, you know, the problem is uh, once, once he did that, it was very hard to reverse it, you know, from a political point of view, I suppose. Uh, he, for example, if he had pushback uh, from, from, you know, the electorate and they said, no, Modi, don't do that. Mistake. That's, that's going to be a problem. Uh, I think he was in a place where it was hard for him to reverse his decision, no? Yes. Basically, his decision was hard, but the way he gave the people confidence that this decision would help them, this decision is for each and every citizen of India. And so people were standing beside him and having praising the decision, even it was difficult for them. Yeah. So are you saying that he's still uh, reasonably well liked? Yes. Well, how do people see him as a, on, the, on foreign policy? Uh, are they pleased with the way he's handling uh, relationships with the U.S. and with China? The Modi government is mostly successful in the foreign policy in all the aspects of the uh, government. Uh, that foreign policy is something which Modi is successful at. India is having better relations with each and every nation right now far better than the Manmohan Singh government. And especially with the United States, your Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, talked about the Indian policy, uh, 8th October, I think, something. Yeah. I suspect, uh, I suspect that you would be familiar with what's going on in Washington, because uh, everybody here is watching what happens in Washington every day, and usually in amazement. Uh, and I'm wondering how people in India, how you feel uh, about Donald Trump. What, what are your impressions of him? So it's, it's okay to speak freely. 
uh, basically Donald Trump was a problem for United States. But when we see Donald Trump from Indian perspective, there are quite few things that I like about him personally. The way he speaks about terrorism in UN, I saw his speech. So he was very clear that radical Islamic terrorism is a problem. And that is something India is aligned with. India agrees that terrorism is a problem. Secondly, United States is now uh, concerning about Pakistan. Pakistan is an ally of United States. But yet, United States is trying that Pakistan must take action against the terrorists which are residing in Pakistan. Yeah, so, so I mean, how do, you, how do you feel about it? Are you worried about terrorism in uh, Varansi? Varanasi, yes, right? there have been terrorist attacks in Varanasi. It's, it's something that all of India is worried about. In Varanasi 2004, there is an attack on Varanasi, terrorist attack. Ah, that's not so good. Is it? You think it's getting better or getting worse? Is India doing the right thing to uh, contain these terror attacks? Yes, India is doing better. It's gradually increasing. India is uh, focusing on its internal security, um, having maintaining relations with uh, nations like Israel, which are training Indian forces in dealing with internal securities and uh, terrorists. How, how, do, how does the average Indian feel about Israel? You know, Israel is, a, is somewhat controversial these days, and I wonder how you feel about Israel. Israel is in this. If we don't look at the Israel in the very same manner as the rest of the world thinks. I believe. Um, Nobody in India is concerned about Israel. Israel, we feel, is a nation which is a friend. Um, our prime minister is getting uh, special atten attention there. Uh, they are prime ministering, visiting India, talking in Hindi, doing everything what a possible country or friend country can do. So Israel isn't a kind of nation having a Jewish image. That isn't the kind of image we are having about Israel in India. It's a nation of innovation. It's a nation of development and how a nation can grow from nothing to everything. Ah, you know, it, it makes me want to ask you whether you have plans to leave India when you have your MBA and go to another country and try to do business there. Yes, I can. I, I'm trying to do. If I get an opportunity, I will definitely do that. But I would serve India because I'm an Indian citizen. I'd like to serve India first. And that makes me ask you about your relationship with the government, you know. Since uh, Vietnam, since the war in Vietnam uh, back in the uh, 60s and the 70s, the relationship of the citizen and especially draft age uh, students and uh, draft age kids in general has changed and they, they don't feel uh, any sense of uh, loyalty, they don't feel any sense of, many of them don't feel any sense of patriotism. But in the case of India, I suspect you like your democracy, you're proud of your democracy and you're proud of your country. Am I right about that? Yes, you're very right about it. And we are the largest democracy in the world. And I believe average Indian is patriot. Each and every Indian I know is a patriot. Though there are some uh, philosophical differences of ideology, but each and every Indian I believe is a patriotic person. Ah, that's great to hear. So, uh, when, so if you might, you might uh, work overseas, you might get involved in a company that, that's international, but you would always be patriotic and and loyal to the country of India, I take it. Uh, I would be serving India if I'm in, in a foreign country, for example, st say United States only. So I would be sending the dollars to my country. In, indirectly, I'm uh, helping the Indian economy uh, by providing foreign exchange to India. So there are many ways, but I believe personally, first we should serve India, and then I would do it to the world. That's a lovely thought. <laughs> What do you think about China? China is a neighbor of yours. China is very aggressive. And I guess uh, you've been following uh, Xi Jinping and his uh, National People's Congress the last few days. Uh, what, what are your impressions about that? Uh, personally, China is a kind of bully to India, not, I would say, a rival, but a bully. Um, um, as a matter of fact, we have Joklam standoff, 70 days standoff uh, months before. Um, Brick held after that. Things calmed down. Now, relationships between India and China are fine. Everything is fine. But there is a kind of tension always between China and India. Uh, United States trying to stand with India to counter China in Asia. And China can kind of having supporting Pakistan, knowing that Pakistan does not have good 
internal security or terrorism, uh, supporting them in CPEC. And we have a kind of objection with CPEC because CPEC passes through Kashmir, uh, disputed Indian territory. It's uh, Kashmir occupied by Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, Karnaki, we're going to take a short break. Uh, forgive me, we'll be back in one minute and then we'll resume this conversation. And I want to ask you what I should be doing about India. We'll be right back. Okay. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Hello, I'm Michael North, host of Asia Pacific Business Strategies. In this program, we'll look out across the Pacific from the center here in Honolulu to meet the most interesting people and understand more deeply the most important business strategies that shape our world. We look east to the mainland USA and the Americas, and we look west to Asia, seeking a breath of the trade winds that affect our business lives in Hawaii. We also examine the extraordinary people, technologies, and companies based here in Hawaii, which inspire the world with our unique spirit of aloha. So please join us here every second Thursday at 1 p.m. Wait, Karnaki, wait, wait. Okay, we're back, we're live. There's Karnaki Mishra on the other side, and he's in Varan Varans Var Varanasi uh, in India, northern India, near the border, and a few hundred kilometers from the border, and not too far, 700, I think it was, kilometers from Delhi. Uh, it's a very old city. It's uh, near the Ganges, and he's in the outskirts. He's a student at one of the schools there. I guess uh, you'd say he was, what, a sophomore or a junior, a sophomore? and looking at an MBA, hopefully, and looking at uh, going into business, possibly international business. And we so enjoyed talking to him, get a view of the other side of the world. So let me, let me ask you about the women. Can I ask you about the women? Yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, you're not married, I suppose. You're a student, right? I'm 20. Uh, how I can get married? <laughs> too, too early for that. You have to have a certain amount of, of, of spare cash. <laughs> So, but, you know, we read in the U.S. about all these uh, rapes. Um, and in fact, yes. there's a popular movie here on Netflix which depicts uh, rapes on buses, um, you know, by, by uh, uh, people who, who jump the girls on the buses. That's very tragic because I think it's probably one in a million. It doesn't happen very much, and yet it, it gets the press interested all around the world. So is it a serious problem? What do you know about it? How do you feel about it? How do your friends and relatives feel about it? Uh, basically, it is a kind of problem whole of world is dealing with. Crimes is something which is happening in the United States. Crimes is something which is happening in India. The question is, is that thing reported to the international media? Is that thing reported to the Indian media? There are far more worst cases in India of rape or any other problems, but they are not reported. Only one single of them were not reported, and it became an issue. But there are problems which occur in India daily, and people don't report it. About. Yeah. The women don't report it. And, and so it doesn't... Yes, women yeah. don't report it. Media doesn't give it coverage. Yeah. Media leaves the news after some time having uh, getting the TRP and getting the publicity uh, for a particular period of time. Yeah. Very interesting because, uh, you know, I, I get the feeling, especially with the Harvey Weinstein case, and I'll ask you about that in a minute. You must have heard about Harvey Weinstein. Um, that uh, if, you, if, you, if you shed light on it, if you make it public, if the media does report it, that tends to control it. It tends to diminish the effect because then it becomes, uh, uh, you know, it becomes um, uh, everybody's business, so to speak. Uh, now, in the U.S., over the past week or two, we've had a huge scandal over Harvey Weinstein, who's a, a film mogul in, in California, in Los Angeles, in Hollywood. And uh, he, he was, uh, he was uh, making affronts, uh, doing uh, sexual harassment on a number of movie actresses and other people in the movie business. And now he is the object of derision all around the country. And I heard this morning that he's the object of derision in the U.K., 
Uh, and in fact, the UK is having its own kind of um, uh, uh, issue about uh, uh, sexual harassment in the legislature, in the parliament, believe it or not. Um, so you know how these scandals kind of spread and, and you know, they, they go from one target to another target and before you know it, the whole world is involved in, in the discussion. And I wonder if you've heard about Harvey Weinstein in Varanasi. Uh, uh, I didn't heard about it, honestly. Uh, you are telling me. But what I get to know or what I personally believe is any kind of molestation, uh, whether it's on uh, film stars, a uh, normal person, it's something which is should be stopped, a punishable crime. After the uh, rape in India in Delhi, uh, the government of India passed rules and regulations that uh, death sentences can now also be implemented on the rapists. Yeah. So, I mean, are, are people being punished? Are they being prosecuted? Are they being imprisoned over these issues? There are uh, significant steps taken by the government, but I believe there is less impact on the people, even though there is a death sentence in the worst cases, but people do not fear it. Mm. Uh, uh, the minimum age of sentence or the uh, period of sentence is uh, seven to eight years. Mm. Well, let's let's skip to uh, how it how it would be how it is for American tourists. You know, a lot of people in this country uh, do visit India and they like India and they see the Taj Mahal and all that. Uh, I, in fact, my goddaughter spent uh, time in the streets of uh, Mumbai. Um, working for a nonprofit, and that was really interesting for her because uh, there was there was no luxury there for sure. Um, so I'm I'm wondering how, what what your advice is to Americans who'd like to come but maybe are somewhat reserved about uh, the food, the accommodations, uh, personal security, um, uh, just general cleanliness. Uh, how should they see India these days? I mean, I think one thing is clear, and you've made that clear is. It is a democracy. It is the largest democracy in the world. And we always have to give credit to India for that. And in a funny way, you know, against the context of what's happening in the United States, it may have a better handle on democracy than we do now. But what's it like for a tourist? What's it like for somebody considering coming to India, coming to Varanasi, um, and, and trying to see the essence of the country? Uh, basically, if I have to explain that uh, India in few, few, few simple words, the only thing I can tell about India is always expect the unexpected <laughs> for each and every one. Either you will like it or you will not. That's the kind of image or that's the kind of definition I can give about India. And you talk about, uh, uh, basically I would talk about perception about India. This um, a movie called The Slumdog Millionaire was oh, there sure. Everybody's a few years seen that back. One. That's and, been all over uh, the world. That, that had movie. an impact on image of India. Yeah. It's not an accurate image? It's a part of the image. Yeah. It only shows a part of the picture, not the whole picture. Uh -huh. Well, what would you add to, uh, is, uh, what is it, Islamab Islamabadic millionaire? I forget the name. Uh, what, Slumdog millionaire. Slum, slumlord millionaire, yeah? What, what would you add to that discussion? Basically, if there is poverty in India, like slums, there are skyscrapers in India, like Mumbai. Uh, there are Bangalore, cities like Bangalore, flourishing, rich in each and every aspect, much better in many cities compared to United States. Yeah, we, we know some very uh, wealthy Indians who uh, uh, have not only come here, but bought property here, started businesses here, who are billionaires. So it's possible, I mean, maybe you see this for yourself, it's possible to become very wealthy in modern day India, isn't it? If you do the right yeah. thing, start a business, you can really be rich. No? Yes, uh, if I can give you a simple fact, if you can earn one dollar per day in India or one dollar by work per hour in India, you can be a millionaire in United States because in India, population is too much, I should say, more than enough. And that's the fact that if you uh, can take decisions and make profitable decisions only by one single rupee in India, in terms of United States and in dollar, it would be in millions. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, that's to me, that's very interesting. And um, and maybe you, you can do that. Maybe you can find a way. Wouldn't that be nice, Karthiki? Do you have the thought yes. of, of, of becoming a millionaire? <laughs> Everyone dreams to be. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, what about, uh, have you traveled outside the country yet? Have you, you know, you're a student, you're young. Uh, have you traveled to any of the neighboring countries? Uh, no, I believe I have not traveled outside India, but inside India I have traveled a lot. Uh, is that what people do? They get around. But where have you been? Um, Indian cities, uh, Delhi, Agra, Kolkata, um, um, and many other states, uh, Amritsar, and many other cities I have been. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I suppose uh, you, you go as um, uh, just vacation, you go as a, a student, you go on business, you go for family. Why do you travel? Um, basically, I go on vacations because it's quite difficult to travel during the times of college. Mm. Sure. I know you're a devoted student. I knew that because we had some issues trying to schedule you. And in fact, it's what, six o'clock in the morning now. Thank you for getting up early for us. You know, one thing that people, one thing that people um, in the U.S. Uh, see India is, is for the, 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 uh, the call centers, right? And the technology uh, and the fact that uh, Indians do speak not only English, but the language of technology. Uh, and, um, you know, I don't think people realize in this country uh, just exactly how high tech India is. So can you tell us how high tech India is right now beyond the call centers and behind, uh, beyond the fact that people know about it? Do they use it? Uh, is it something that you study in order to you know, get leverage in business? Is it, is it all around you or is it something that's struggling? I would say that it is something which is prospering or rising not now. People in India are aware about technology. They know how to use things, whether how much typical it is. And if I have to explain the in terms of technology how India is, I would simply say uh, there are only three nations in this world who have made their own supercomputer. One is United States, second is Japan, and third is India. Ah, good. <laughs> Well, I must say, you know, we do a lot of Skype, actually, Karnaki. We, we, we do Skype connections with the U.S. mainland. We do Skype connections with East Asia. Uh, we've done Skype connections uh, with Russia and Africa. Um, and sometimes we have good connections and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we go to the neighbor islands here in the state of Hawaii. We have terrible connections. But the connection we have with you in Var Varanasi is really terrific. You look great. <laughs> Hard to believe you're around halfway around the world. You're looking so good. So and what's clear to me is we have to do this show again. Uh, I want to check in with you and find out what the news is from time to time. And you can re report to us if you don't mind. We, you can be our reporter on the street in Varanasi telling us what's going I on. I can be. I can be. That's fine. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to that. I'm so delighted to meet you. I'm, I'm so glad we connected. Let me add to, to our viewers that uh, how we connected was... Um, Karnaki just wrote me a note on, on email and said, hey, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to talk to you. So, okay, here we are. <laughs> so I feel that, that destiny has put us together, Karnaki, and I am very appreciative that you wrote. Yes, thanks for having me. Thank you for being on our show. We'll come back and we'll do this again. Karnaki Mishra thanks. in Varanasi, India, telling us what's going on in India. Thank you so much. Aloha. Aloha and namaste. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs>